Hi, this is Ruth. Welcome to this week's video and if you're new to my channel, it's great to have you here. And today I want to talk on this video, as you'll see in the subject, about grief and loss. Basically, I went on a conference last week and it really was interesting because I ended up attending all of the workshops throughout the day that were about death and grief. And I think I did this quite subconsciously, but it ended up being one of the most positive, uplifting experiences. And it really made me realise how difficult as a society we find it to talk about grief and death and mortality. And that refers to our own mortality, our families, our partners. And when we do lose someone, then how difficult it can be to have that natural process kind of um, honoured and allowing us to grieve in our own way and to have that space as a society to allow grief the time and the energy and the, the space that it needs to flow out of us because if it doesn't flow out of us and we don't find ways to allow that, then it can end up in serious mental health issues. It can end up in, um, from a kind of an economic point of view, long-term sickness off work or difficulties in the workplace. And it's really something that I feel like we need to do a lot, lot better at. And one of the main focuses of the conference that I was at was how we can use creativity. And that doesn't mean you have to be a creative as such to use these practices. It's for everyone. And whether you're watching this and thinking, that doesn't apply to me, I'm not creative. You know, we all have creativity within us and having different tools and ways of processing our grief other than the normal kind of ones where we are allowed to grieve through a funeral ritual or we grieve through talking and that's the way that we're able to process the grief or through our tears. There are other ways that we can experience and open ourselves up to that can help us in the process of losing someone and in the aftermath of losing somebody as well. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit into this and share with you some of my experiences that may help you as well. And kind of just opening up a dialogue about this subject, which I think it's really, really hard to lose somebody, especially in England where we are, you know, we're not renowned for being able to discuss our feelings openly. And I think that that is something that is really hard because, you know, the example of my own experiences of grief are that there was very limited time available to express that grief and that be okay and acceptable and very limited time off work and no kind of, after a funeral, no elements of rituals or, you know, wearing black or showing a marker that you were in mourning for somebody and that then people would know that and be able to treat you with the respect and give you the space and the kindness that you need when you are going through a grieving process. So during this day, this conference, I met some incredible people working in this field and I wanted to just share a little bit around that. So I met a guy who is a poet in a hospice and what he does is he helps people who are in the process of transitioning and are having palliative care or are in the hospice knowing that they are on the journey towards death. He will work with them to create poetry about their life, to leave poems behind for grandchildren or, or sons and daughters or family members. 
and it was really inspiring to hear him talk about how we can view the transition and the journey towards death as just that you know it is not a battle we are all going to lose that battle and it is part of the journey and it's something that is to be acknowledged and accepted as much as possible obviously sometimes it comes around a lot sooner or in circumstances that we wouldn't choose but the idea that we don't talk about it and then when it does happen or that process begins and we go towards the end of life that there's this kind of battle that has to occur and I am not judging people that find that helpful in their road to recovery or you know they're trying to rally against an illness and recover from that but sometimes it can be more nourishing and create a better end of life experience for us to see it as part of our inevitable journey that we are all on whether we choose to talk about it or we don't and the idea of using poetry to connect with our own story and make sense of our lives and create something beautiful is something that I was really inspired by talking to him and I hope that yeah, the idea of writing, creative writing, poetry, journaling and talking to our loved ones through that medium. So whether you are the dying person or the person who is losing someone, there are massive benefits to the creative writing process. And we can all do this. Like if we lose the shame that we can't write and that we're not talented and we're doing it without expectation, we can all try it like I lost my dad 15 years ago and I write to him now like I can't see him I can't touch him I can't um, talk to him physically but I can communicate with him through what I choose to write down and I can imagine what he may respond and it's a very cathartic healing process that I only began like maybe in the last 18 months so if I'd have been aware that that was something that might have helped me it could potentially be something that I'd done earlier on during my own grieving process which is still ongoing so the idea that poetry and creative writing can help us and that there are actual poets working in hospices doing this day in day out I'm going to post a link to his Twitter below it was really inspiring and he talked about how it was one of the most positive places that he'd ever worked and it made him so happy to be with people and the change he saw in them when they were able to see their lives through this creative writing. It was really inspiring and a lovely story. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that I attended a death cafe and... I was sort of like going into this thinking, what is this going to be like? What am I doing going to this death cafe? And it turned out to be a really lovely, just totally informal um, coffee, cake. Let's sit and talk. We could talk in small groups. Then we did a larger group discussion. And we really talked a lot about our own experiences of grief or our lack of space to grieve and the difficulties we've experienced in people accepting our grief and our mourning and it gave people a real open safe space to talk about the, lo the loss of a parent or the loss of a child or the fear of our own mortality you know that is the ultimate challenge for a lot of us is when we do lose people and when we start to think about this more, it brings home to us that we are not immortal. We are mortal souls and we are, you know, going to depart this life at some point. So having some just time to talk about that and have a little bit of a laugh with it. You know, there was a lady who was sharing what music she would want and how one of the songs really annoyed her husband when she used to dance to it. So she was kind of laughing about how annoyed he'd be that she'd ask for that at a funeral. And we were talking about songs and we were talking about poems and readings and 
what we'd want our own funeral to be like and how we feel about the moment of dying and the prospect of illness and the fears and the you know the concerns we've got and the anxieties and it was really uplifting to have a space to be able to do that and the death cafe is a concept that is you know you can go online I'm going to put links below and you can find death cafes in your area where you can go and meet people and just have a space it may be too painful for your family and for your friends to really let you open up about the grief of losing someone that's what's happened in my own experience so these death cafes give you a place and a space to be able to do that and they're really fun I mean they are emotional but it was a really great way to spend a Friday afternoon and just this idea that we can use creativity so the concept of the death cafe is creative the concept of writing a poem writing letters to loved ones you know, using dance as part of the grieving process. There were lots of other different modalities that we discussed. So you don't just have to think about grief as a way of, you know, we cry and we can talk to people and we can see counsellors and therapists and that can be really helpful. And there are a myriad of other ways that we can process our grief. So I really hope that if you've ever lost someone and you've ever had that experience where your grief has not been validated and you haven't been given the space and the tools to really accept and work through the grieving process, it is not a linear process. Sometimes we feel like we are going round in a spiral and we're down and then we feel up and we're like, the grief is gone and then just a smell or a song or something brings us back into the grief and it's very challenging so please if you want to talk about this I'm happy to talk to you in the comments and I'll also post some links if you want to look at finding some other support there's a great charity or organization called the Good Grief Trust so I'm going to put a link to them below as well and be kind to yourself and know that there is a creative part of you that, you know, you may be able to use that creative part of you to help you in your grief. So I hope you've enjoyed this somewhat sombre, but also uplifting discussion of grief and mortality and how we can better just talk about it and open up a dialogue. So I'll see you next time for another video and thanks for tuning in. All right, bye.